Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so I've been working on Ken's controller here. This is actually a video inside a video. <laughs> um, if you're watching the repair video for Ken's, I don't know which one I'm going to release first, so if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. I'll, it'll, the video will come out later. But um, anyway, I was working on Ken's controller. He was having some problems. And uh, a couple of problems, I replaced these two meat probe ports and, and we were plugging in meat probes in port two. Uh, these are the Muxall Pro meat probes. These are custom made uh, just for Muxall. And we were having a problem with, so I plugged it in port two. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. Having a problem with the meat probes uh, they, they might read for a little bit, then they'd stop reading, or they just wouldn't read at all. And, uh, but we did have one that worked okay. Uh, maybe I should have plugged that one in first. <laughs> but as you can see, this probe is not reading at all. And I was kind of saying, you know, it, I think the problem is in here. It's, this is very tight in here. Soldering this is a real pain. And I'm guessing that's the problem. Also, these connectors don't seem to be very good quality, uh, even though they're all metal. So yeah, so that one's not working at all. This one was working. So we'll go ahead and verify that real quick. As you can see, it works. And I was talking about doing the jiggle test on it and how to make sure, whoop. Yeah, see how it's now it's 26. You have to make sure you don't pull it out. Oh yeah, see now it's not working. Uh, so what happens? Yeah, if the ADC gets confused, it just dumps zero. And it's basically the same thing when you pull it out. It, it registers infinite resistance. That's impossible, so it just dumps zero. So anyway, so back to the story. We'll we'll look at this later. I wanted to show you guys. I was going to show you guys the inside of one of these guys, and I'm going to turn the camera off, I'll zoom it in so you guys can watch, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're under the microscope now, and uh, I want to give you guys a better look, and I want to take a better look at this myself, because this, is, uh, this isn't looking too, too good. But I was looking at this, look at there's, there's corrosion in here. That really caught my interest. Yeah, another problem we have too is, and this might be my fault, is I probably didn't specify to not, you're not supposed to connect this braided sheath or whatever it's called uh, to ground. Uh, you can, but it needs a, it needs a ground like, it needs to be an earth ground. Yeah, that's bad, but this right here has got me stumped. This corrosion. And I think, I think I'm just going to cut it off <laughs> so we can uh, take it apart. Okay, so we're just going to clip this guy off. Pull this plastic sheath off of here yeah wow look at that yeah we've got some major corrosion happening in there that is interesting oh yeah see that that wire just broke right off It's like these things were, yeah, I mean, they're shipped from overseas, but but they went via air. <laughs> it's not like they're in a crate floating on a boat somewhere. And I know they didn't happen in the lab. And that's where they've been, they're, they've been in the lab. I mean, I guess when they are coming through customs, they could have been exposed. 
Hold on for a sec. I'm going to have to get personal with it. I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and pulled all the plastic protectors. I don't know, wire protectors, insulators, probably a better term. Yeah, look at that. That is, uh... That is some major corrosion going on. Huh. Well, anyway, um... <laughs> I, uh... I mean, this stuff is feels gooey. It's almost like there it was submerged in water. Uh, I'm gonna let's check the other end of this guy and uh, see what he looks like. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Clip this guy off here. So I did this when I was evaluating these, and and also when I got the first batch in, you know, to, you know, kind of a quality control thing. But this is the second batch, and so I didn't really think, you know, to tear them apart every time. Yeah, I don't see any corrosion. Boy, point, cutting this thing open would be really fun. I wonder if I just cut this end off right here, if I can pull out the RTD, because this is just the crimped end. That, the, R, the actual RTD, the resistor, should be down in, in here somewhere. So, yeah, give me a second. I'll see if I can get that off. Okay, so I went ahead and and cut the um, the tube, if you will, off. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just I just used my Dremel, cut it, and uh, pulled this out. This was down here. You can see the temperature sensor is right in the little tip right there, which is good. This is a. There. Uh, let's see. I'm back under the scope here. Oh, you guys probably can't see. Hold on for a sec. I'll zoom you in. So, yeah, so the, the sensor is right down there. That is the actual RTD. So this all looks good, right? I mean, I cut the plastic off there and everything. These people make sensors. I'm guessing they know how this all works. Uh, give me a second, I'll cut the plastic off. I might as well just tear the whole thing apart. Okay, so I pulled the wires off. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the plastic case off. But yeah, it, it has two wires, but they wrap the two wires together right here, and they put a little blob of solder on there. And that, the whole purpose of this is so they can take the measurement between these two wires and the measurement across the RTD. And they subtract the measurement between these two wires and and um, and maybe I'll draw a picture when I'm editing it. It might be a little more clear, but they they can subtract the length of the wire based on the measurement they get between. Let's see if you can see these. So there's two wires tied together there, two wires there. They take the measurement of this and subtract it from the the measurement going across RTD. So it doesn't add more to the resistance. And yeah, you can see a little blob of solder on there and get that sensor right down on the tip, which it looks like they did okay. And and these, as you can tell from some of my postings, they read real well. And and since it's crimped, crimped right here, <clears throat> oh, where is it? Uh, since it's crimped right here, it re removes some of the stress off the, or it's, you know, it's a strain relief for the, so you don't accidentally pull this guy out of the tube. So yeah, as long as it's on there good and they've got it wire wrapped well, it should be okay. But anyhow, so anyway, that's what a inside of RTD looks like. Or a uh, meat probe, I should say. Yeah, I'll have to ask them about these wires but it looks everything looks okay except for this thing here 
Yeah, this is not good. Let's look at a couple more. Yeah, this one's doesn't look as bad. But yeah, see this right here, this is gonna cause problems. This this sheath right here. Yeah, that that needs to go be cut back further. I mean the Crojan's not too bad on this. None of the wires are falling off. Like that other one, the wire just popped right off. Okay, so I am going to pull a sample out of each one of these bags <laughs> and, and take a look at uh, what the connectors look like inside there. Uh, I'm hoping, as you can see, there is no moisture. I don't know if you can see this or not. If you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the TV that's behind the camera. <laughs> um, there's no moisture inside these bags that I can see. I mean, they're not fogging up or doing anything strange like that. And they were in these baggies when I got them. So, uh, I'm going to uh, pull one out of each bag and test them. Okay, so this is bag one that we were starting with, and I detected moisture in two of these. So I am going to, uh, I guess I'll stick this yellow piece of paper in there. <laughs> Take a closer look. This is one of them out of bag nine. That's not too bad. We know this part's pretty good. I mean, it's it's good. That this side looks assembled and good. We didn't see any corrosion in them. I could probably take another one apart, but I'm guessing it's probably okay. Which makes me believe that at the factory this was okay, and all this corrosion happened during shipping I guess so maybe in when it was sitting in in customs or something I don't know okay so there's something I wanted to kind of show you real quick and and this is kind of getting off topic but 
So you can see that this is what the, uh, you know, two of the, the wires are connected to, right? Or one of them, I mean. And, and you can see that, oh, you probably can't see because my hand's in the way. So you can see that they're basically connected. Now, when you connect this, this uh, stainless sheath to this guy right here, you change. You're basically turning this into a ground rod, if you will, or a rod. And, and that's not good. And to show you, so here's a regular Traeger style meat probe. And, and this is the ground barrel right there on the, the connector. And you can see... These, these are not connected. This sheath is not connected to this ground in any way. And so when they connected this sheath to this ground right here, that was a no-no. They're not supposed to do that. And they did. Well, this is going to pick up all kinds of noise, going to cause problems with ADC. So that, that's a bad. <laughs> and that's why I'm, I'm looking at how to take the sheath off of this. But the, yeah, that uh, that corrosion has really got me uh, scratching my head. Okay, so I think I've come up with a a solution to our plug problem. So let's just get started. I'm just going to clip off the old connector. All right. And I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink on it to hold the braiding in place. Okay, so here's the connector. This is just a standard um, TRRS, and it stands for Tip Ring Ring Sleeve. It's what's on the other one as well. Uh, uh, this one, though, has a plastic cover, <laughs> I guess for lack of a better word, uh, with a strain relief. So we've got the the plastic sleeve, and then we have the heat shrink over this. So none, so there's no way that this stainless steel braided sleeve is going to transfer any kind of noise to our uh, sleeve pin. And this is for the sleeve pin right here, and that's what was causing the problems uh, with the uh, all metal ones, as you saw. You saw it earlier. So what I'm going to do is, and I know this might look a little bit arts and crafty, <laughs> but uh, hot glue is actually a very good insulator. Uh, it's a, just basically melted plastic. And, and it also uh, is uh, very durable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squirt this this hot melt glue inside and all around this so when we assemble this thing there is no way that you could squeeze that and cause it to short out all right okay so I'm gonna let this sit for a while and when I come back oh by the way yes yeah, so what I was doing is I was filling this whole barrel up with hot melt glue okay so while I was waiting for this to cool off, I uh, went ahead and set up a controller we can use to test it with. Yeah, so I know you guys can't feel this, but this thing is <laughs> its pretty solid. And uh, yeah, I can see some of that glue did get down in here a little bit. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And see how it works. Well, there you go. So it's showing about 79 degrees. Yeah, it's probably because I've been sitting no on breathing over this thing. <laughs> so anyway, that looks pretty good. And uh, I'd compare it with another one. We've been messing around with it. So, but one of the things I wanted to show you, which is the benefit of this over the metal ones is that now the way I build it, when I do it like this, it's going to be waterproof. 
So we're going to test that real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a water bottle here. And I'm just going to dump this thing in there. You guys see that okay? So I'm just going to take it out. I'm going to dry off the end. Oh, you probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm just dry it off the end with my shirt. Because, yeah, if this thing's wet, it's going to short inside the jack. I just wanted to show you that this part in here now is waterproof, right? Alright, let me move this before I dump it all over my bench. And as you can see, it is perfectly fine. So there you go. That is one added benefit of this of this uh, rework is that now it's completely completely waterproof. So there you have it. I like that. Now is this going to be the permanent fix for this? Uh, probably not. It's a good one, uh, but like I said, it's a bit arts and crafty, <laughs> craftsy, arts and crafts e. If that's a word, uh, it really needs. Uh, let me see if I can find one. Yeah, here we go. It really needs to have uh, something like this, which is a. Uh, it's called a, a, a cable over mold, I believe is what it's called, or it's over molded. And it's basically, you know, it's kind of like exactly how I did this, except without putting this screw on sleeve, they just stick this inside a mold. And then squirt a bunch of plastic in there, and then out pops this thing. And uh, yeah, this is nice. But this, since, since I only make these probes by the by, you know, a hundred at a time, <laughs> the setup for for some something like this can be in the in the tens of thousands of dollars. And to run just a hundred probes would just make the probes way too expensive. So uh, we're probably going to do this until I can sell thousands of probes, which, um, I don't know, is not really my goal, but uh, you never know. But yeah, this is a nice solution. It's not the prettiest solution, but uh, it works. It's very strong. I mean, I guarantee you, you can yank on this thing. If you guys have ever dealt with hot milk glue, <laughs> it's, it's very strong. And... Yeah, it's, it's, it, you're not getting this thing apart, it's watertight, it's strong, it's a good solution. I like it. Anyway, that is, that is it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal, or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.